they did that too. Bastards. Bastards. Right. And then and then there were some German U boats that were very close to the uh, Jersey Shore. I guess. Oh yeah. The German U boats came over here. You know. So you know. So okay. All right. But other than that, other than that, the U.S. United States as a country was never really threatened. Federal officials said in a news release that a criminal information charging Halliburton with one count of destruction of evidence was filed in a federal court in Louisiana. Here we go. Halliburton has agreed to pay the maximum fine. Oh, that's going to be a slap on the wrist for Halliburton. Nobody's going to jail. See, just like Wall Street. Yeah. And Goldman Sachs, nobody goes to jail. Yeah. But if you protest at, at Wall Street, you go to jail. Speaking of Goldman Sachs, I believe they just found out the other day something that Goldman Sachs was behind a, uh, they own an aluminum <coughs> a firm or something, uh, a silver, and uh, the law says that uh, a certain amount of silver or aluminum must be produced every day. Well, what they were doing was they were producing, maybe, let's say, 5,000 tons or something like that, putting it on trucks, carting it around, and bringing it back to another warehouse owned by them. It wasn't going out to be sold or anything of that nature. So what you're telling me... It was breaking the law. So what you're telling me, this is very interesting, uh, Dr. Bill, is that all the activities of big business since we have a Republican-controlled Congress, all these activities by big business in the United States have been unethical, underhanded, uh, just downright sleazy, and uh, and and the, the deregulation by Republicans is real deregulation. So they they have like a like a, a, a what's the word carte blanche? Carte blanche. Like they do what they want. They own the government. They can do every anything they want, and nobody goes to to prison. But if you protest the corruption, you go to jail. You're a terrorist. You yeah, are if, a terrorist. If you protest anything that big business does, you go to jail, and you're you're automatically you're uh, uh, instigating violence, mm. and you're you're a terrorist, and this and that. But if you're part of corporate, and you're a crook. You don't go to jail, and you are allowed to continue to be crooks. So you see how sleazy and corrupt the right wing is, and, and and all those inbred dummies, those idiots out west and down south, keep on voting for the Republicans be based on their cult, and that has nothing to do with the God of the Bible. You see how you're being fooled and deceived. How how you people are really lemmings. It's really despicable. I mean, if I was in Europe, if I was in another country, I would make fun of Americans. They're they're the, they're the biggest laughing stock that that were that ever existed. You know, <clears throat> Halliburton is going to be on probation for three years, <sighs> and will continue to cooperate with the government's criminal investigation. Yeah, which will amount to nothing, right? Criminal. Yeah, which did not spell out the amount of the fine, either. Uh, hey, they didn't announce the fine. But well, let me guess, it, it's, it will not even make It a, will be the cost of doing business, it, that's it, all. The fine, the fine will not even make a pimple on Halliburton's ass. Mm -hmm. The Houston-based company has also made a $55 million voluntary contribution to the National Fish and Wildlife Foundation. <laughs> like How they, nice of them. Like they care. How nice of them. The company responsible for a careless oil spill suddenly cares about the National Fish and Wildlife Federation. It was not a condition of the court agreement. 
Burton was BP's cement contractor on the drilling rig that exploded in the Gulf of Mexico in 2010. The incident killed 11 workers, spilled millions of gallons of oil into the Gulf. Halliburton had recommended to BP to use 21 centralizers in the well. But BP decided to use six instead. The simulations indicated there was little difference between using six and 21. But the program manager was directed to, and did, destroy these results. Unbelievable, see? Made them disappear. They're gonna make you disappear. You understand? That was a little my little photo op that I did before. Similar evidence was destroyed with my buddy. in a subsequent incident in June of 2010. Efforts to forensically recover the original destroyed, displace 3D computer simulations during ensuing civil litigation and federal criminal investigation by Deepwater Horizon Task Force were unsuccessful. In agreeing to the plead the guilty, Halliburton has accepted criminal responsibility for destroying the aforementioned evidence. Hmm. Interesting. Very interesting indeed. Horrible Halliburton. And KBR, their yeah. subsidiary. Yeah, everybody connected with them. Who made a fortunes in Iraq. Okay? Fortunes. Whilst the 4,400 or whatever died. So that Halliburton could make their fortunes. On the blood of innocent poor kids that were fighting for freedom. That joined the military. I bet many of them were from uh, low-income families or poor families that joined the military and I'm going to take a psychic guess, educated guess. They joined the military to get a, uh, a free education that they could not afford in the private sector outside of the uh, military. They, they could not afford it, so they, they got suckered in by uh, the recruiters and the advertisements about getting a free education with a military career. And then the war came about. If they survive. And then the war came about, and they were already in the military, and they lost their legs, half their head, their face, or whatever, or dead. And they never enjoyed that free education. They never reaped the benefits. Well, that's the way of the Republicans it. like it, you know. You mean that you get bumped off? Yeah. Don't come back here and then have us veterans have to pay for you. You know, you veterans have to pay for you, etc. So they just die on the battlefield. So the so the greedy right wing elitists want to use people. Yeah. They want to use the ma the mainstream masses and the poor. For their objective, which is uh, evil greed. Yeah. And now. Bring it on home. Yeah. To us, baby. Yeah. And now, of course, with a Republican Congress, companies can do anything they want. Governor Christie and in case anybody doesn't know, that's the governor of New Jersey. Unfortunately said on Thursday that President Obama should have been more open to working with Republicans when he took office and blamed him for the partisan gridlock engulfing Congress. Why? Why? why, why when, when, it, when it's... Obama's to blame. When it's, their, when it's to their benefit, when it's to the benefit of, of Republicans, they want bipartisanship to get their way, but not the other way around. Yeah, if, if Obama's the, fault for not working with the Republicans. Yeah, yeah. You know what that means? Giving them what they want. Giving them what they want. Yeah. 
But if that's Ob working with Republicans. But if Obama and the Democrats are fighting to pass laws to help the middle class and the poor, <gasps> and and sing and mothers trying to raise kids on their own and, and and the elderly and the and the disabled, oh, then it's repeal. You know, we were against it. We're against it. Then th they don't want the you know bipartisan. It cost us too much. It cost us too much. So it's a one. It, yeah, every everything what? that. Has, no F-17s? No, 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 we must buy them! So it's it's a one-way bipartisanship, their way. Exactly. I see. It's Obama's fault for not working with them and giving them what they want. Screw them. That's like, you know, that, that's like saying to, to Satan, eh, whatever you want, whatever you want, hey, Satan. Hey, Satan, boy, yeah. Hey, Beezlebub. Whatever you want, whatever you say, you can have it all. Yeah, you want everybody's soul? Take, take it, take, take it. Take it, take it, come on. It's the same thing. A, a, a compromising, which is giving into, it's not compromise with Republicans, like this fat pig, obnoxious uh, a gas bag, Chris Christie. It's only one-sided, this bipartisanship. Christie, a Republican, seeking a second term and is widely viewed as positioning himself for a presidential bid in 2016, participated in a discussion hosted by the nonpartisan Aspen Institute in Colorado. He touted his own ability to work with Democrats to win the support of organizations and individuals who backed his opponent four years ago. The events, held in conjunction with a meeting of the Republican Governors Association, also featured government Bobby Jindal of Louisiana. Bobby Jindal? Yeah. Governor Mike Pence of Indiana and government Scott Walker of Wisconsin. Oh, that scumbag? Yeah, that scumbag. Jonathan Martin, a New York Times, new national political correspondent moderated the events and noted that all four governors are seen as potential presidential contenders in 2016. I have to concede that when I thought I'd see the four of you on the stage together, it wasn't Aspen. I had in mind it was Des Moines, Martin said before rattling off a series of questions on voters' low opinion of Congress, as well as immigration, the economy, Obamacare, and the rise of libertarian populism in the Republican Party. Christie cracked jokes and had the crowd roaring with laughter when Martin asked him about his son Andrew's political view. Huh. What the hell is his son Andrew's political views? I don't know. I, I didn't even know he had an older uh, son named Andrew. Is this Andrew. something like what Rudy, remember his son? Remember that crap with his son? Yeah. Oh, the kid wouldn't wouldn't yeah, stay yeah, yeah, still? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rudy Giuliani was given a speech. Yeah. I think it was his his uh, winning the election or re-election and the kids in the... Andrew... Uh, Giuliani, he was a fat kid. He wouldn't stop moving. He was like fidgeting, like you. And they and they made fun of him. They oh, it was hilarious on Saturday Night Live. I remember that. <laughs> they had uh, I think Chris Farley, because he's chubby. The late the yeah, late yeah, Chris yeah, yeah. Farley. Yeah, they had him doing it. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, I Chrissy has a, a an older son like that. I know he has a son. He's got a daughter, and uh, but but he has a son that's that that that's grown. That's an adult. No, he's not an adult. Oh, oh, okay. That's why I'm saying I I don't know what I've never heard of this before. The only thing I can think of is like I say with Rudy and his kid. How the hell do they know what his son wants to exactly. be when he be when he grows up? Come on. Yeah. There's no use having children if you can't brainwash them. Christy equipped. He then added, he's, he in, <laughs> he's in the Princeton Republican Club. 
oh, wait a minute, this sounds like an older kid. He, he's, yeah. Princeton. Well, yeah, well, well, Christie's trying to brainwash everybody in New Jersey, so why not his children, right? Exactly. Hey, maybe he does have an older kid. The Princeton Republican Club meets in the closet. <laughs> and well, they should stay there. <laughs> the other governors praised Christie for his leadership following Superstorm Standard and working for all New Jersey residents, not just Republicans. Short of, and don't get any ideas, oh. a truck hitting him on the way out, Christie is on track to win in New Jersey. Oh, yeah, because a. Uh, uh, a obnoxious, pushy guy like him just has to win. With, I think, unprecedented support, not only from Republicans, but from Democrats as well. Yeah. Well, oh, to hell, to hell with, uh, with the, uh, with the, uh, the masses, uh, the, I mean, the, uh, <laughs> the middle class and the poor in New Jersey, as long as Christie and his rich buddies win, so. What that says is, particularly in times of crisis, now we are in an economic and fiscal crisis in our country, in each of our individual states. What people want more than anything isn't just Republican or Democrat, they want leadership. Though her spokesman, Christie's Democratic challenger, State Senator Barbara Bono, took jabs at Governor Christie on Thursday. She better take some hard, below-the-bell jabs if she expects to defeat Christie. Under Governor Christie, New Jersey has one of the lowest rates of job creation, the highest unemployment rate in the region, and one of the highest unemployment rates in the country. And I don't think the poor and, and women are too crazy about him cutting programs to help women, you know, and closing food pantries and Planned Parenthood and all that and uh, social programs. His only economic plan has been to provide wealthy corporations with billions in tax breaks, which has left New Jersey lagging behind. Yeah, welfare only pays recipients $140 a month under Christie. You can't even, I mean, I don't even think that covers a um, a food bill, a f uh, you know, a utilities, let alone rent. It does not cover you, anything. It doesn't like cover that. anything, really. It's the same thing with <coughs> food stamps. That, that's unheard of, $140 a month and then cutting food stamps. These are single people without children. In other words, if you don't have young children to a Republican, well, even if you have young children, they don't really take, they don't really care. But if you don't have kids and you're single and you're, and you're you're poor in the gutter, they carry much less, <laughs> you know. Uh, they bandy about this figure of four, what is it, $4.50 a day for food stamps, supposedly gives yeah. you? What the hell That's is that, a lie. What the hell is that going to do? That's a lie, even you, if it were true. You get yet less than that? If it were true, it's only one meal per day. One meal? Yeah, what kind of a meal? Cents. That doesn't even, that barely gets you a pint of, of roast pork fried rice at the Chinese takeout. Right. That's only, so okay, so let's say that it'll cover lunch or breakfast. Breakfast or lunch, that's it, one meal. But as I say, I happen to know a person who's receiving $16 a month in food stamps. Which is, which is microscopic which is meaningless. Meaningless. Not for him, mind you. Not for him. Well, it's 16... It's 16 extra bucks it's, of food. It's $16 of more than he had before. Yeah. But it doesn't, it doesn't really help in a supplemental way right. with the overall food bill, right. food expense. No. But neither does any of the welfare programs crap. Gross. Because it's not meant to. It's not meant to get you out of poverty. 
No, but but raising the minimum wage that would do help from seven and change to eleven dollars and change will help a lot, considering there were enough jobs out there, minimum wage jobs out there. It'll it'll help bring people out of poverty. And Maybe. how about the the cheating that's been going on with programs like Social Security, where today let's just say somebody's making twelve hundred dollars on Social Security. Wherein they should be making twenty four hundred dollars. Listen, in, in, the, in the New York metropolitan <coughs> area, in the New York metropolitan area, even if they raise the minimum wage to eleven dollars and change, you still can't pay the the kind of rents that they're charging in this part of the country. You can't afford the rents. So how the hell could you afford utilities and food? And 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 if you have a car. Let's say you have an older car, you know, car insurance, gas, <coughs> you know, it's like uh, a lot of employers will ask you, do you have a reliable uh, vehicle to come get to work? You know, they'll, they'll, they ask a lot of questions nowadays, you know, and then they want to know, Some a lot of people ask your credit, they want to, they want to check your credit, and it, so it's like, you have too many applicants going for the same job and they're so nitpicky these companies that it's Remember, like it, we should not be obligated to corporations for our survival like, big mistake like what the industrial revolution did to america big mistake people left family farms Went to the city. And went to the city. And so lost their independence. And their, and their freedom. That's right. And their liberty. That's right. So when you hear Republicans today talking about freedom and liberty, don't listen because they're full of shit. You mean when they wave the flag and, and play the patriotic uh, game? Yeah, what is Yank Susan? John Philip John Sousa, Sousa yeah. the marches. Don't those marches, just they make you, oh, they give you tingles and everything, tingles. And how to be a patriot. Is, is that why they, they get the flag? Is that why they wear the lapel, yeah. uh, the little flag pin? Yes. The lapel, on the lapel? Yeah. It, 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 they're fake Christians and they're fake patriots. Believe me, because everything they're for is, is anti American. You know, like outsourcing all the uh, American jobs and not paying taxes. And they do not know the God of the Bible because everything they are, they are for is against the God of the Bible. Yeah. Not the other dude from the Bible, Satan. Uh, he loves Republicans. But Christie painted a different picture. Okay. He said. After, in fact, Governor John Corzine four years ago, because he worked with its leader, oh, that, uh, the, the, the Democratic Party. John Corzine, the former Goldman Sachs man, the billionaire that was a, the Democratic governor of New Jersey, which I could never understand. Yeah. Who used to be CEO for Goldman Sachs. Yeah, how he ran as a Democrat, I... I can never guess why. Goldman Sachs has its nose in everything yeah. in and, the government. And people, we the people are supposed to be the government, yeah. are letting it all happen. Because people don't want to get involved, they want to party. Anyway, Christie said that uh, because he worked with the leaders of the Democratic Party and everything, uh, this has helped jumpstart the pro uh, the, uh, the, the, to create jobs in New Jersey. Okay. He also said that while he has been willing to work with anyone who backed Corzine, Obama did not reach out to Republicans early enough and instead pushed through initiatives including the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act, often called Obamacare, without a single Republican vote. Remember what else didn't get a single Republican vote? 
Social Security. That's Medicaid. Right. That's right. Voting Rights Act. That's right. Anything good for the people will not receive a single Republican vote. That's true. So it's no big deal. You know? He didn't try early enough, Christie said. First impressions matter in these jobs. Christie, who worked with Obama to pass an aid package after Storm South, Superstorm Sandy, said the president must be held responsible for the gridlock. It's Obama's fault. I think the only person in Washington who can bring the parties together is the president of the United States, Christie said. Really? Yeah. So that's it. Okay. We are ready for... The Reverend Dr. William J. Oh, you're gonna no, oh, you're full because I ate the pizza. Oh, so when William H. Morrow the Third calls, we could ju I could just take his call. You could take his call. Oh, okay. Um, um, all right. That sounds good. That's <laughs> right. Uh, Dr. Bill had the uh, pizza and the and the heavy duty craft beer, so he's he's full. His belly is full right now. Yeah. Um, You'll eat a little later. Yeah, he she should be calling any minute now. But the, um, let me see. Yeah, he should be calling like any minute. Are you um, sure that we can't read in this thing? Do you have a shorty? Well, it has to do with what we were talking about there you with know, food stamps and everything. Um. Okay, let's let's get into it, and then you could you could take over. About forty-seven million Americans received food stamps last year but only a relative few are required to work or look for a job as a condition of receiving the aid. Now, House Republicans are considering whether the work requirement should be strengthened as they seek cuts to the 80 billion a year program. Yeah, where are the jobs, Republicans? Where are the jobs? Well, they have a job. Republicans have a job. which has doubled in cost over the past five years. I wonder why. Oh, oh. there he is. We'll have to postpone. Yeah. Hello, is this William H. Morrow III? Must be psychic. How are you, James? Dr. Bill, how are you? Mm. Good, we're good. Um, uh, Dr. Bill was, uh, well, we, we read an article before about how uh, Halliburton is uh, uh, admitted that they destroyed evidence that they were to blame for the Gulf oil spill, which is kind of doesn't surprise me. What uh, does me? So you destroy evidence, then you come right out and admit you did. So and you seek to cut them off. I, yeah, there I is. Uh, most criminal criminal acts and people would deny. Well, they're going to get fined, which is going. We were we were talking before about it's going going to be a little slap on the wrist for Halliburton to pay to 